everyone, my name is Sarah Rapp and I'm a study expert that has helped thousands of students get the best grades of their entire lives with the least amount of time studying. Today, we're going to talk about active recall and why it is one of the most effective ways to study. And at the end of this video, I'll be sharing a super secret but super, super highly effective way that you can do flashcards to elevate the way you learn and just memorize things in like a day. Honestly, life-changing and everybody that I've shared this with has loved it and finds it way, way, way more useful than the conventional way of doing flashcards. So firstly, what is Active Recall? Active Recall encompasses a range of study techniques that require you to retrieve information from memory without consulting an external source. A really popular form of Active Recall, for example, is flashcards, where you are presented with a question on the front of the flashcard and you are then expected to answer the question from memory alone without looking at your notes. And we will go more in depth about how to use flashcards in this video. There are many different types of flashcards that you can use, including Anki, Quizlet, or even physical flashcards. Another really popular form of active recall is blurting. And that's where at the start of each study session, you sit down and you just write as much as you can remember about the topic on a piece of paper, again, from memory alone. Then you consult your textbook and you compare and you have a look at the areas that you miss and you focus on those in your study session. Finally, another really popular form of active recall is uh, textbook questions or application questions, where not only do you have to remember the content that you learned, but you also have to twist it in some form or way to relate to the question. Because the questions never just state this or define that. Often they are real life examples that you can't really just give off rote learned definitions to answer. Okay, so now we're gonna focus specifically on flashcards and my favorite form of flashcards, which is Anki. Now, which subjects are you gonna use that for? I find that flashcards work best for content heavy subjects. So for example, biology, where you're trying to memorize certain processes like the steps of transcription or translation, or just fact, like the differences between a plant and an animal cell. It also works really well for subjects like history, where you're trying to remember the dates of certain uh, events or the importance of certain key figures, as well as something like business management or law. And specifically in medicine, I used it a lot for anatomy and pharmacology, where again, it was very much just like a superficial level of understanding and just so much content that I had to try and drill in and remember. It is less useful for subjects like math or chemistry or physics, or I guess programming and stuff like that, where there's a lot more skill in involved in that you know you're doing calculations or you're balancing chemical equations you're not trying to just memorize chunks of information but you're using more of a skill and every question is different for that I would recommend doing things like application questions or exam questions so you just practice the skill and you get used to it so now let's talk about how you put it all into practice Let's say you have a biology class at dance school or any other subject that you plan to use flashcards for. Usually, if there is a PowerPoint that is covered in class, there's a set of learning objectives at the start of the PowerPoint. If not, have a look at the study guide for the subject online and there are usually dot points correlating to whatever unit or whatever term that you're in for that subject. These will be the guide that you use to create your flashcards. Try to turn each learning point into a flashcard. The trick here is that the answers for your flashcards should be pretty short, like one to two sentences maximum. If you're trying to memorize whole chunks of text, it's just not gonna happen and you're just gonna have a bad time. And so this means that you might need to break down each learning objective into smaller questions and more flashcards, really. If you struggle with that, then I would just go through the PowerPoint and sort of turn each section or each dot point on the PowerPoint into a question and therefore an answer. So for example, you're in biology class and you're getting a lecture on enzyme. I mean, obviously maybe you say the learning objectives are vague or they're not included. The first part of the PowerPoint is, and it says enzymes, biological, organic catalysts. Then as your first flashcard, you could say, define what an enzyme is. And on the back you'd say enzymes are biological organic catalysts. And then the next dot point could be 
on the PowerPoint could be enzymes speed up reactions that would otherwise be too slow to sustain live. And then again, you'd make a new flashcard and the question could be, what is the importance of enzymes or why do we need enzymes? And then on the back, you'd say enzymes speed up reactions that would otherwise be too slow to maintain life and so on and so forth, right? And I don't think you should ever be scared of having too many flashcards. I would rather you have like, you know, a hundred flashcards for a lecture but the answers are a sentence long each because you will be able to whiz through them really quickly rather than having a flashcard that's like a two paragraph answer because you won't remember that and you just keep getting stuck on that flashcard and you'll have to keep coming back to it. So anyways, once you've made your flashcards and I would recommend making the flashcards as soon as you can after the lesson. If you had biology that day, I would try and make the flashcards that night. If you don't have time that night, that's fine. Tomorrow or the day after, but as soon as you can so that the information is fresh in your mind. And honestly, I think that making the flashcards themselves, especially if you're using an online app like Anki, is more than enough and you don't really need to rewrite your own set of notes because writing notes word for word is not really as effective as you know actively recalling information. And the beauty of having an online app like Anki is that everything is searchable. So when it comes to exam period, you're again, forgetting about enzymes. You're like, oh, I need to go and revise that. You can literally put in Anki, um, you can search enzymes and then it'll come up with all the cards that have the word enzyme in it. And so it's sort of just like, like you would be searching for your notes as well. Anyway, so once you've created your deck, you want to spend whatever time you have left going through it. So that might be, again, maybe you have an hour of study that night and it takes you half an hour to do to make the flashcards. You would then spend the next 30 minutes of that session doing flashcards that you created either that lesson or from previous lessons. Then on the weekend, if you've got a couple of extra minutes or hours to study, you could also go through your flashcards and revise them. The good thing about Anki is that it practices something called spaced repetition. And this is where it will give you flashcards regularly over intervals to check if you still remember them. So for example, if I create a flashcard today, I would need to get that flashcard correct three times before it's approved and it's okay. Then tomorrow, it would test me on that flashcard again. If I got that flashcard correct, then it would be all good. And it would test me on that flashcard in maybe three or four days down the track. If I got that flashcard wrong, I would have to get it correct another two times and then it would test me that flashcard again the day after. And so what you'll find very quickly is that there are flashcards or there's information that you just know really well and you answer it straight off the bat and it won't test you on it until like next week or next month. But there will be flashcards that you just like information that you just cannot for the life of you remember. Maybe, I don't know, it's really just obscure or whatever. It will keep testing you on those flashcards day after today until you finally get it and then it will spread it out and that is the beauty of having Anki to test you on those rather than just doing physical flashcards plus it's much faster again just to recap as soon as you can after the lesson create your flashcards using the learning objectives or the study guide or the PowerPoint science or the textbook if you know you don't have PowerPoint science and then whatever free time you have left to study practice doing practice your flashcards test yourself on the flashcards and revise old flashcards that you create created in the past as well. So just a few more quick tips on how you can use Active Recall, specifically Anki flashcards. One thing that I really like about it is that you can use it almost anywhere because all you just need is to grab your laptop up. So for example, if you're on public transport on the way to school, if you've got like 15 minutes between the end of school and sport, or you're just waiting for something, it's really easy to just bring your laptop up and start doing the flashcards as opposed to, you know, bringing out your textbook and bringing out your notes. It means that you don't have to get like really stuck into something Thing. So it's a great way to just scatter out throughout your day. And if you think about it, like four 15 minute sessions is an hour. So that's really awesome. If you find that you struggle to stay focused, it works really great with the Pomodoro technique as well. I love the combination of flashcards, Pomodoro technique, lo-fi beats, and if you really want to, like film a study time lapse of yourself best, best combo ever. In addition, if you like to raise the stakes and make it just a little bit more fun, what you can do is you can sort of, one, make it a competition between you and your friends. Like if you're all set up in the library, you can be like, first one to get 20 flashcards right in a row gets 
lunch bought for them or something like that. Or you can just make it a competition between yourself. Like if you get three wrong, you have to do five push-ups. Or if you get five correct in a row, then you get a five minute break, like stuff like that. Just to make it more fun and more enjoyable. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about my top secret Anki tip that I wish everybody knew about because it is like honestly changed my life. Usually with flashcards, people say the answer in their head and then they check if they get it right, which is fine. Like again, that is active recall at its finest and it's great. But the problem with saying it in your head is that like you can sort of convince yourself that you got the answer right, you know, like for example, going back to the example that I had before about an enzyme, like if you said define enzyme and the back of the flashcard said, enzymes are biological organic catalysts. What if in your head you said enzymes are biological catalysts and then you clicked it and you're like, oh yeah, I got that right. But you didn't. You missed one key word, which in your exam could be the difference between two marks and one mark, right? So what I like to do instead is I split my screen. So I have Anki on one side and I have a, a one note document or just an empty word document on the other side. And I look at the flashcard and what I do is I type out the answer before checking if I got it right. This is super, super effective because by typing it out, you're doing something physical, right? Instead of just saying it in your brain, you are actually typing it out. You could even write it out if you wanted, but that takes longer. And by typing it out, you are further reinforcing it in your memory. So it works that much better at storing the information in your memory. The second good thing about this is that you can actually see your answer written down and therefore you can check with the back of the card to see if you got the answer completely right. And what I would recommend is being really strict on yourself, making sure that your answer has all the keywords before you mark yourself as correct. You don't have to be writing an essay or like, a, you know, it doesn't have to be word for word each time. You can do dot points, but you should know what the key words are in each flashcard that is going to be what the examiners are looking for on the exam. And so yeah, that's my tip. It takes a little bit more time, but it'll end up saving you time in the long run because you will remember the information so much faster, you won't have to keep repeating the cards over and over. Honestly, like, yeah, one of my favorite tips. So yeah, that brings me to the end of the video on Active Recall. Hopefully you guys found it interesting. If you have any questions at all, just comment down below. If you found that you learned from this and you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. I'm so thankful for you guys and I can't wait to see what you do with your flashcards.